So Marvel's Daredevil series has just premiered on Netflix. And I've watched all 13 episodes to be able to give you guys a full spoiler-free review of this exciting new series. Hell's Kitchen New York is rebuilding from the destruction suffered by the Avengers' climactic battle with an invading alien force, leaving it very vulnerable. Lawyer Matt Murdock is opening an idealistic defense attorney practice with his friend Foggy Nelson to fight for the innocent instead of profiting from the guilty. Blinded at the age of nine, Murdock finds he has enhanced senses that allow him to see in a different kind of way, and he uses his extensive martial arts training along with a black outfit, to continue his fight against urban crime under the cover of night. However, all crime in Hell's Kitchen is headed up by a mysterious figure that none can touch, let alone expose. Murdoch with his friends and allies attempt to fight using the law to bring this man down, but the city will need a hero who is not an angel, but a devil who dares to champion the hope that remains for its people. So this is the third time we've tried to bring Daredevil into the live-action medium, starting off first with the TV movie The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, which is a continuation of the Bill Bixby television series, which I grew up with and I always kind of liked it. I kind I liked Rex Smith's portrayal. The character it felt, felt very good. And it was supposed to be sort of a backdoor pilot for Daredevil series, which obviously never came to be. And then we got the 2003 live-action movie, which never really cared for. I know there's a whole lot of backlash, and I'm not going to get into it. But let's just say, even though, even when I watched the director's cut a few years ago, still didn't hold up very well. It feels extremely badly dated. A lot of overuse of CGI, kind of running off the sort of Matrix action-style digital effects type of thing, and... Overall, I didn't think it was a very good movie. It just doesn't stand the test of time very well. I didn't think Affleck was really the problem with the film, even at the time. I thought Affleck did a fine performance in the film, but overall, I didn't think it was the best step forward for the character. And now, because Marvel Studios has the rights back to Daredevil, and they decided we're going to incorporate him into the cinematic universe, but we're going to do it in a different type of way. Not a movie franchise, but something that is episodic. And I thought that it was a very good idea after watching this. It works out to be a very interesting type of way to interweave him into the storylines because it is totally and stylistically very different from the rest of the cinematic universe, even though it exists in that same continuity. And I was very pleasantly surprised when I looked on Netflix and the thing was rated TVMA, which means it was going to be very graphic. It was going to be very adult and mature with its stuff. This is a very dark gritty, graphic, bloody, and violent series that uses all that to the right extent because Daredevil is more on the darker shade of things that he's dealing with stuff in a darker area, a very urban, dangerous environment and be able to bring that content to full fruition in this type of series seemed very vital to its success and indeed it does it in so many amazing type of ways that both makes it very entertaining and very powerful and very resonates very strongly with the subject matter that they're going with, with all the, uh, the violence, the corruption, all the drug trade, all this type of stuff with all the organized crime in the city. And just, it works extremely well, adding all that into just pushing the envelope that Marvel is confident enough and strong enough in their beliefs with the, with the content of the character and everything else that they would push the envelope that far with this, that you could go on, Netflix and not have all these type of network restrictions of standards and practices and content that you can or cannot put in the series. They were given pretty much free reign to be able to push it as far as they needed to and it really works out for the benefit of the series. And the series actually goes along on a fairly Batman Begins-esque type of structure where you're getting a lot of the groundwork laid out for the whole storyline in the present but you're getting a lot of flashbacks showing the backstory of Fat Murdock and his friends and Wilson Fisk as well. Just like every, pretty much almost every episode, there's a flashback to something to kind of set things up and tie into the rest of the storyline that they're pushing forward in that episode. And it all worked very, very well. I thought just what they did here actually worked a little bit better than what they did in the 2003 movie. That is a lot of the same material, obviously, because it's come from the same source material. But I think because you have a series, 13 episodes, 
almost 12 hours worth of time to elaborate and draw things out that they're able to develop things at a much more gradual pace have things kind of have more nuance to the story in various places just have a lot more depth and dimension to what you're doing and you don't have to rush through everything you can take things at a very easy stride but there's still very strong pace the episodes that even though these run roughly about 50 minutes it still feels as well put together feels doesn't feel like it's over long it feels just as strong and tight and cohesive as any sort of 40 minute long primetime drama and i thought that the film the uh series just utilized everything very well with its subject matter and it does get extremely violent and has some amazing action sequences i was very impressed there's a great action sequence in the second episode where it's almost just entirely just one take. And it's just Daredevil going back and forth, Matt Murdock just beating up thugs one, one after another trying to get to the end of the hall to uh, free a kidnap victim. And just like just seeing something just so well shot like that. Something, again, like I, like I love so much with John Wick. They have long action sequence takes allow the choreography to play out so beautifully. They have so, such great choreography. It just looks so amazing just seeing whether it is Charlie Cox or his stunt double or whatnot, just going all out in these sequences. It looks fantastic. The martial arts work in this is just top notch for this type of series. Just like, this is what Daredevil should act like. This is how he should fight. It just looks spectacular to me. And the cinematography is just fantastic too. Just, again, dark, seedy, gritty type of stuff. Just getting into... The, de the depth of the urban environment and everything, just like all the nighttime sodium vapor look and everything, just everything shadowy and moody and everything just looks fantastic. I loved it. And uh, the cast is fantastic too, just like this is practically perfect. I thought Charlie Cox did an ama amazing job as the lead of this series, as Matt Murdock, that he just has a, a subtleness about him that... The whole series goes for a much more subtle type of way. It's not being too overt with trying to explain his powers or trying to visualize things. It's very subtle in how it's trying to do everything. And Charlie Cox's performance is very grounded, very humanized. You can really kind of relate to this guy. You get into the soul of this guy. You get to understand him inside and out and just the struggle, the conflict that he has and everything that has gone on through the journey of his life to this point and what he's trying to do with this series, why he's doing it. Charlie Cox does a fantastic performance, just adding so much emotion and depth and layers to the character of Matt Murdock. They're just like, it just felt so good. And again, just uh, allowing the characters, the performances, to sell everything instead of trying to visualize everything so much. And the rest of the cast is just fantastic too. I thought um, Deborah Ann Wall as Karen Page, uh, this uh, their sec lady who becomes the secretary in their office, great, vibrant, wonderful character. Great performance from her. I thought she just adds so much liveliness and charisma to things. Just like the chemistry between the cast of Charlie Cox, Deborah Ann Wall, and Eldon Hansen. Just really, it's just adds so many moments of just like, it's so fun. It's so humorous. It alleviates the tone. Just gives you something to laugh about in the thing. Just like, you get to enjoy these characters. They have dimension. They have likability. There's so much layers to the characters and Eldon Hansen does a great job as Foggy Nelson. I just thought he just added that again for most of the series he's very upbeat, he's very charming type of uh awkward type of guy, whatnot, but he just has that um uh, endearing quality to him and there are points in this series where he does have to carry a lot more dramatic weight and he does it absolutely effortlessly. I thought everyone was just perfectly cast for every facet of the roles that they had to inhabit. I thought the character of uh Ben Ulrich portrayed by Von D. Curtis Hall, he did a fantastic job in this series, just like he just has a certain gravitas about him. Uh, it's very, uh, again, very subtle, but he just has, because he's a lot older of an actor, just seems to have a little bit more seasoned, weathered quality about him that just really kind of permeates the screen. And, you know, it does have a lot of charisma, too, so... But everything just works in the right degrees. Everyone just turns it up to the right amount of uh, everything that they have to, whether it's dramatic qualities, emotion, charisma, whatnot, they just have it at the right degrees at the right times, which is also a credit to the direction and production quality of the series that everyone was just so focused and very much on the same page in most cases. And obviously, Rosario Dawson, you cast her in everything, you've almost got like everything half right already. It's like everything I see her in, she's just fantastic. She's a marvelous actress. I enjoyed her a hell of a lot in this series as the character of Claire, the 
<clears throat> this nurse who ends up uh, taking care of Murdoch after he gets injured. And they grow to have a certain relationship over time. And it's, it's very good. She, I've never seen her have bad chemistry with anyone. And she's just fantastic. I love her in this thing. And obviously you got Vincent D'Onofrio as Wilson Fisk, the kingpin. And when I, when I heard D'Onofrio's name, I was, I was like, that's fucking perfect. And they showed the photo of him. He looks like the spitting image of the kingpin. And he's a great actor. But in the whole series, I felt this was the most sort of off-balance type of thing. It just felt like they were trying to do a lot of different things with the character, make him very widely dimensional and do a lot of different things to almost make him a little too sympathize in my type of view or whatnot. They're trying to make, give him much more of a slightly tragic backstory, sort of bullied backstory or whatnot and stuff like that, which is partially in the, from the research I did, that is partially in the uh, original canon, but they added more things to it to make him a bit more of a sympathetic type of villain, which I felt at certain times just felt like it was pushing it too far. They just didn't quite sit right for me with me in that it really felt like they were trying to push the character in too many directions. They were trying to make him very sympathetic and have this romantic love story in the whole series and trying to make him this extremely intimidating, menacing, physical presence in the series, which D'Onofrio does pull off very well. I just felt like they needed a little bit more straight and narrow focus instead of having him be waking up in the middle of the night and being this sort of acting like he's this traumatized 12 year old and then he's going off and being this murderous uh, mafia boss or whatnot. I just felt like there's just, it just needed a lot more tighter cohesion for me. That's the way I felt about it. Just felt like it's a great actor. He could do great things with the role. Just felt like they were just pushing and pulling it in too many different directions from one episode to the next, and it just didn't feel quite as cohesive or as well uh, overall crafted as, every, as everything else was in this series with their story arcs and everything like that. It just felt like a little too many things. Just made him a little too humanized and make him a little too much of a, a guy you can relate to and sympathize with. I felt that was a little pushed a little too far for my taste. But he still does a fantastic performance in many different areas of the whole series. And I thought just the cast was phenomenal. I thought the writing on the series was just it was completely excellent. That they had a focus of story and character over action. That their approach was a crime drama first and a superhero series second. That they focus on, again, story and characters building up and fleshing things out. Fleshing out the storylines, making them very dimensional and realistic and make the characters very full and rich and everything to make it relatable that when things do start happening, when there is peril, when there's danger, you really feel for these characters. And it is an amazingly well-written series. I thought they did a fantastic job fleshing out every element, making everything so, so awesome in this type of series. It just, I thought it was just so damn well-written and just it made the one episode to the next. It was just like, I kept, because Friday I just wanted to watch a few episodes and stop and go on and work on something else but like every time an episode ends like it has this this hook at the end of the episode it's like i gotta keep watching i gotta keep watching and i was up till three o'clock in the morning finishing the series so it, it keeps you hooked in there if, if if the characters get you in this thing and just like you like the style you like what it's doing it's just gonna keep hooking you in and it's gonna be tough to just kind of break break free of the series for a little break or whatnot but as i thought just like the thing really started picking up steam. I really liked, after episode one, the pilot was really good, but I thought episode two just kind of like hooked things in a little bit stronger. And as it went on, the series just got more and more awesome. Uh, my favorite episode of the series is the seventh episode, Stick, where you have Scott Glenn showing up as the mentor of Daredevil, the guy who partially trained him early on, and he's fucking phenomenal. As soon as the, not spoiling anything, but he shows up, with a samurai sword and starts cutting on people and is like, this is the best way to open up a bad episode. I love this. And he's a very good character. I like the episode overall because it seemed to set up a lot of things for down the road for potential second season storyline, which does hint at certain possible, maybe otherworldly, supernatural type of things. Nothing's really explicitly stated, but there's a lot of hints there. It's like, there's something a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more than just the like urban crime drama going on in the background of this character's storyline and everything is like that's very very intriguing to me and it's like 
is still acknowledging because a lot of the there's a lot of setup in the series acknowledging the Battle of New York from the Avengers, how it kind of decimated parts of the city, and now they're trying to rebuild. And there's a lot of cheap real estate and everything, so that's constantly referenced throughout the series. And there's kind of like one jokey uh, Captain America reference. So, but with that type of uh, maybe possible supernatural type of storyline down the road, it really maintains that idea that it is part of this universe that has Thor and all this other stuff, Guardians of the Galaxy, all these type of things that has these much more amazing, fantastical type of elements that it would be very interesting to see how they weave that into this thing that's kind of start out in a very grounded type of way, but in the back of your mind, you know it's part of this larger, expansive universe that has all these much more uh, fantastical elements in it. So it's going to be very interesting to see how if they go ahead with season two, because season one obviously is beginning to rave reviews. I'm raving about it. Netflix has it certified fresh. People are just loving the hell of it, so I don't doubt that a second season will be coming, that they will explore much more uh, different elements of this world, and it'd be very interesting because uh, this is a great series. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought the thing just had so many great moments. I really, <laughs> even from the first photos, I really liked that they had him in the black suit because like again I went right back to Rex Smith in the trial of the Incredible Hulk which I kind of like that look but you just keep waiting the whole series waiting for him to don the real red costume and it does come for you guys it does come and it looks spectacular I just loved it the thing just again it's a very Batman Begins as sort of storyline origin type of thing where it is a hero's journey in a certain way that he is going along in this, this type of way that he's starting out as just a vigilante beating up some thugs and whatnot and just gets more involved it escalates it becomes more about trying to find the, the path for himself trying to find the reason trying to get himself he gets thrown off track then he has to find himself back on track and then kind of rise up and ascend to being daredevil at the end of the series so i thought it was amazingly well crafted amazingly well acted and written and everything i just i enjoyed the hell of it and it is a kind of series where it is all about the overall story arc that very few like single episodes be like oh i want to go back and just watch that one episode and just not watch anything else it's really kind of like the overall story arc but you have something like the seventh episode stick where it has a bit of a, a bit of a other storyline kind of see, laying the seeds for something that just kind of like you can go back and just watch that and kind of get a full sort of storyline there. You get, you get something that's independent of everything else. And I thought a lot of great stuff in this series. I just go on and on about things, but there's like it deals with so many different facets of this very gritty type of realism and everything with uh, Wilson Fisk just owning the city he has so many people in his pocket judges and cops and lawyers the media too so it's like you're trying to fight this juggernaut who owns like half the city and you just don't know how you can bring him down but it's just this fight they're trying to find a way to do that and i thought they just went all the right avenues with the storyline it just was very satisfying at different levels and it's great when you have a series that has you hooked in so much that you're getting to like the last 10, 15 minutes of the series finale, just like, I don't want this thing to have a cliffhanger or whatnot. I want this thing to pay off. I just want it so much. That it is, it's built itself, built itself up so well that you want to get that payoff, and it does. There is no cliffhanger here. It ends on a very good, amazing note. I really enjoyed the series. I very much highly recommend everyone go check it out if you want to get this. Uh, see Daredevil, done it in a very well uh, crafted type of way. That is, uh, has great action sequences, well fleshed out characters, great acting. I think this is definitely hit it right on the money, and it's going to be very interesting to see how the other Marvel De Netflix series uh, pan out. I think you have Iron Fist and uh, AKA Jessica Jones and uh, Luke Cage coming up sometime, whenever. But uh, they're expanding, and it seems like if you can do something this good with each one of these i think you got a great success on your hands and uh if you guys have seen the netflix daredevil series definitely post your comments below i'd love to hear what you guys think about it which episode you thought was your which one which episode was your favorite of them all what character really uh caught you the most that just really kind of reeled you in which one was your favorite character of the whole series how you like everything how you like it all because uh I thought it was just really well done. I thought the just thought the character of Wilson Fisk just could have used a little bit more focus and sort of uh, narrow direction. Not 
want to make them one dimensional, but it just felt a little too wide expansive. I thought give them a little bit more narrow because I liked it early in the series where they're playing them up as a very shadowy type of almost Kaiser Soze figure. Like this guy's larger than life and he doesn't come out in public that much. It was just very interesting. So I very really much enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoy it too. And uh, if you enjoyed the uh, video here, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. Comments below and share the links around. Uh, I'll be back in sometime soon. I'm hoping to do a review of the Ridley Scott film Black Rain later this month when I get the Blu-ray for it from Shout Factory, Escape from New York. So take care, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.